Donald, you really pulled through for me here. When I invited you to star on Family Feud, I didn't expect you to bring the rest of your gang and even Drake along, too. You got it, Steve. Also, we come as a package deal. Wherever I go, they usually tail me around like my own personal sidekicks. Excuse me, your sidekicks? Whenever Daddy Donnie rings, you know Drizzy will always be there to answer the call. No matter how late in the night or how rainy the weather, I'll always be a shoulder you can lean on. Drake, we talked about this shit. I'd bring you along so long as you promise not to be all weird and zesty. I'm sorry, Donnie. I'll be good now. I don't want to rain on your parade or Steve's. Last thing I'd want is to turn that beautiful smile upside down. He, he's not going to be like that when we start filming, right? Don't worry, Steve. I notified them of the guidelines beforehand, so we know the code of conduct. That's good to hear. Don't think I've ever done an episode on this grand of a scale before. Although you all may not be related by blood, I think we can tweak the rules a little bit just this one time, considering the viewership you all will bring. Pleasure to meet you, Howie. Listen, I'll tell you, I'm ready to see all those sexy broads carrying their briefcases. Also, you can bet your bottom that I'm going to show that banker who's boss. The banker? Mr. President, this is not deal or no deal. Joey, you better take your damn prescriptions. You're not gonna go out there lollygagging and disgrace me in front of my nation. All of North Korea will be watching this. Steve, with us here, we'll drive your ratings through the roof. Might even surpass the Super Bowls. Yeah, I don't know about that one, Donald. The Super Bowl generated over 113 million viewers. Never say never, King. If all we had was doubt in our hearts, then no one would ever spread their wings and leave their nest. The fuck does that even mean? Listen here, Donald. I got an executive producer I answer to. You sure he's not going to say this weird type of stuff when we're out there? Listen, Steve, I know showbiz. I wouldn't bring him on if I thought he'd be a liability on your show. You got nothing to worry about. Steve, I can order my generals to bot viewers to boost your ratings if you want. Oh, hell nah. Definitely don't do that. We do things clean here, Kim. Steve, baby, I'm Donald freaking Trump. We don't need any bots. Any show I'm in makes prime time. We're gonna go 300 million views easy. Steve, I've been meaning to ask. If I slip you a 20, you think you can give Champagne Poppy a cheat sheet on some of the answers? I don't do too well under pressure and could use a helping hand. Donald, I simply do not like this clown. I don't feel comfortable bringing him onto the show. Drake does bring up a good point. They definitely do that for the kids on Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? No 10-year-old is that fucking smart. If I do that, my ass will get fired. I didn't work my way up here just for y'all to tear me down. Look, no one's gonna cheat, and no one's certainly gonna bribe Steve. We're gonna play things by the book here. This is your show, and we'll respect that. Good. Now get your acts in order, gentlemen. This is a family-friendly show. Occasional curse words are okay, just make sure you don't shout it over and over like a 13-year-old in a Call of Duty lobby. No slurs, also no politics. It divides the audience and drives the ratings down. Don't worry, Samuel, you can count on us like how Luke Skywalker counted on Aslan to bring the full force of Narnia's natives down on the Death Star. This, as you know, allowed the rebellion to overload the core reactor with the power of nature magic. Of course, this did require the integral aid of the caped crusader Bruce Wayne, who used his Batarang in order to collapse the right wing of Darth Vader's TIE Fighter. This would make it so that he would be unable to fire upon Tinkerbell, who was currently in the process of ferrying Luke to the reactor shaft. The hell? Donald, what kind of circus act did you bring onto my show? He's always like this, Steve. Don't worry about it. Okay, it's showtime. Now listen, originally I was grateful that Donald orchestrated this whole gathering, but now I'm kind of getting a bad feeling about this whole situation. So when we're out there, no funny business. Got it? You'll have us all on our best behavior, Steve. You can count on that. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Family Feud. I'm your host, the one, the only Steve Harvey. Pleasure to meet you, Richard. Uh, quiet over there. For this game, the going is 300 points, three face-off rounds, three questions. The team with the most points overall moves on to the fast money round. All this to win loads of cash as the grand prize and the chance at a brand new car. The hell is that, Steve? Brand new my ass. Family feud struggling for views. That's a 2015 model. Donald, settle down over there. Tonight, we got a good one. We got the best one. We have... Are you sure you want to refer to yourselves as this? Announce it for all to hear, Richard. Uh, no, I am not Richard Dawson. I am Steve, but all right. We got the team of melanin stealers facing off against the team of champagne poppies. Give me Drake. Give me Donald. Let's start the game. Cups of the, rose, hey. the hell? Bitches in my hey, phone. hey, knock that shit off, Drake. We're at Family Feud, Drake, not Coachella. Ah, oh, come on, let him sing. I'm sorry, King. Sometimes when I have a mic near my lips, I just can't resist the urge to usher in a melody or two. I'll do anything to brighten up the day of the beautiful ladies in the crowd. Fucking light-skinned motherfuckers, I swear. Mr. Harvey, we're on air. Oh, shit. 
Listen up, y'all. Give me Donald. Give me Drake. Let's get this going. Top five answers on the board. Hey there again, Daddy. Uh, I mean, Donnie. Gentlemen, please. We surveyed 100 men and women. Name someone or something you should stop sleeping with as you grow older. Drake. I'm going to have to say 21 Savage, Steve. The rapper? When we're in the studio, he's like a stallion in heat, but he's not the type to settle down. Champagne poppy can't keep sprinting forever, Stevie. Okay, awfully specific answer, but let's see if it's on the board. Show me 21 Savage. It's all right, Drake. Nice try, Drake. You better get the number one answer, Donald. Don't fuck this up. Kim, pipe down over there. Donald, you have the floor. I'm gonna answer with your wife. Your wife? As you grow older, you should stop sleeping with your wife? No, not my wife, Steve. Yours. What the hell? All right, I swear if this answer is on the board, someone's got some explaining to do. My wife. That's what I'm talking about, Donald. We're gonna play, Steve. All right, Melanin Steelers, you're off to a good start so far. 86 points still left in the round, Joe. Four answers on the board. Okay, I won't let you boys down. Give me pop music for 600. What the? Mr. President, this is not Jeopardy. Oh, okay, sorry, Stevia. Uh, All right, listen, we surveyed 100 men and women. Name something or someone you should stop sleeping with as you grow older. Joe, you should be the expert on this category. Steve, did you know this guy was alive during World War II? Actual fossil. Donnie, please, I'm trying to focus. Okay, let's go with Mr. Biggles. Mr. Biggles is your answer? Mm Mm-hmm. He was the name of my little teddy bear I had back when I was six. Oh, of course, I didn't stop sleeping with him until only last year when Jill made me. You slept with a stuffed animal till you were 79? Yep. That bear was in the White House? Yep. Jesus. All right, well, let's go with Mr. Biggles. Oh, wow. Hooray. Nice job, Joe. Hell fucking yes. That's what we love to see, Joseph. Hey, hey, calm down there, Kim. Aw, shucks. Looks like they may take the round. I'm sorry I screwed up back there, guys. No need to apologize, Drake. We're just here to have some fun. Barry's right, Drake. Don't be so hard on yourself. It's still anyone's game. Cope however you want, George. This is what we call a skill issue. You smell this, George. This is what victory smells like. Kim, please. We ask that all our contestants show professional courtesy to one another. All right, all right. I apologize. That will be my final outburst. Good. Now let's hear your answer. I'm going to go with your samurai sword. Good answer. Good answer. I don't know what the hell you good answering, Donald. I don't know any damn kid with a sword, but all right. Show me samurai sword. The fuck kind of people you surveying, Steve? That was a good answer. Hey, that's enough of that. All right, Donald, three answers left on the board. One strike. Donnie, what about... Whoa, whoa, hey! You can't help teammates during this stage. Uh, Sorry, Mr. Smith. Please don't slap me like you did to Chris Rock. What the... Donald, just give me your damn answer. All right, Steve, I'm gonna go with a pacifier. Good answer, Donald. All right, I'll give you that one. That's not too bad. Show me pacifier. Good stuff, Donald. You do North Korea proud. All right, Joe, two answers left on the board. Okay. I'm gonna go with a soup can. Good answer, good answer. The fuck kind of answer is that, Joey? A soup can? Now you listen here. Back during the Great Depression, Nana couldn't afford a nice fluffy pillow for me and old eczema Eric. Because of this, we would often have to resort to sleeping on soup cans in order to avoid having our heads on the floor. Of course, this was a very dangerous time. If you had your head on the floor, then you ran the risk of the leprechauns entering your ear canal and hijacking your brain. With your cerebellum under their control, they would then force you to return back to their nest after stealing old printing press Peter's groceries. It's up there, Steve. Soup can's up there. Um, all right, show me soup can. Joseph, you better get your act together. One more mishap like that, and I'll make sure you won't make it back to the White House. Kim, we do not make threats here on Family Feud. Another outburst like that, and... Uh, Jesus! What is that? What in the hell? Drake, knock it off! Sound crew, cut that motherfucker's mic off unless his team gets control of the round. Heavenly God Almighty, give me the strength to host this damn game. All right, Kim, two answers on the board, two strikes. If you get this wrong, then Champagne Pappas will be able to take control of the question and steal all of your points. That's not going to happen, Steve. I'm going to bring this baby home. Good, because I'm trying to get my ass out of here, too. What's your answer? All right, I'm going to go with children. Children? Yeah. You know, as you grow older, it becomes weird if you sleep next to children. I mean, look what happened when Michael Jackson... Hey, all right, that's enough of that. Show me children. Or don't. I don't even know anymore. Dad, I hope you're proud of old Kimmy Cakes. What kind of weirdos are they showing this survey to? All right, Donald, one answer left on the board. Reel this baby home. Name something or someone you should stop sleeping with as you grow older. Steve, I think we can all agree that Melanin Steelers has this round in the bag. My answer is your parents. 
thank God, a logical answer. Survey says. Wow, Donnie, nice job. Good fucking shit, Donald. Thanks, guys. It's all right, guys, there's still two more rounds. We can turn this back around, no problem. Even if we don't, I'm just glad to be invited by you guys. Drizzy's day always is brighter when the presidents give him a ring a ding. Oh, don't sweat it, Drake. We'd love to have you hang out with us more. Take notes over there, losers, because this is how you win the game. Kim, I already warned you several times. Next outburst and I'll start deducting points. All right, that's our first round, everybody. Melanin Steelers taking the lead with 94 points, but it's still anyone's game. Give me Joe, give me Barack, and let's get into round two. Well, hey there, Barry. Hiya, Joe. Some friendly sportsmanship, I like it. You suck, Barack. Security, next time that Chinaman talks out of line, I want you to tase him. Top five answers on the goddamn board. Gentlemen, we asked 100 men and women, give me a boy's name that starts with the letter H. Steve, I'm gonna go with Hercules. Hercules is the first thing that came to your mind? Good answer, Papa Bear. Mama Bear's just right over here if you need me. Hey, I thought we cut that motherfucker's mic off. All right, show me Hercules. Oh, come on, Hercules is clearly a boy's name. Mr. President, it may be a boy's name, but unfortunately, that was not one of the popular answers on the survey. Joe, your turn. Let's go with haagen The ice cream brand? Yep, surely someone out there has named their kid after the heavenly, delicious, frozen sensation that is ice cream. All right, if you say so, survey says. Oh. Joseph, I'm gonna... Oh. Sorry, Mr. President. Since neither of you guessed a popular answer, let's bring out the next two contestants. Give me George and uh, wheel out Kim on a gurney or something. I can't feel my legs. I did say that this would happen, Kim. I thought you said you didn't make threats here on Family Feud. That's right, we don't make threats, we make guarantees. Gentlemen, give me a boy's name that starts with the letter H. I can't reach the buzzer. George! Okay, uh, I think I'm gonna go with H. Bush. Huh? Can't go wrong with Papa's name. The, the answer you want to submit is H. Bush? Not what the H in his name stood for? H. Bush. I feel like I'm in a damn simulation. Survey says... Oh. Kim, give me your answer and please, Christ Almighty, don't let it be some sort of weird societal taboo or some nonsensical gibberish. All right, this one's for all the marbles. I'm gonna go with Hail Hydra. Hail Hydra? Yeah. Good answer, good answer. Shut the fuck up, Donald. Kim, that's not even a name, that's a catchphrase. Steve, you uncultured fool. In North Korea, Hail Hydra is one of the most common names for boys. It has to be on the board. Whatever, Hail Hydra. Damn you Americans with your strange names. I can't believe this is actually happening. The prompt is to literally just give me a boy's name that begins with the letter H, and none of y'all have succeeded so far. All of you besides Drake managed to run a nation at some point? How is that possible? It's a tricky one, Steve. You think you have the right answer on the ropes, but then just like Tricycle Tiffany, it escapes the tip of your tongue. Let me ask y'all something. Are y'all motherfuckers crazy? Give me Donald and give me Drake. Let's get this over with. Gentlemen, you know the drill. Just give me a damn name, please. Donald. Steve, I'm gonna thank my gardener for this one. Brilliant man, honest, hardworking man. Love him to death. Sounds good, let's hear it. His name is Jose. Jose? That's right, Steve. Solid name, honest man, good answer, good answer. Let me ask you something, Donald. Shoot. How you spell his name? What, you want me to tell you what two plus two is while I'm at it too? I mean, Jesus. Get a little culture in you, Steve, or take an ethnics course or something. It's spelled J-O-S-E. Okay, and you're aware the prompt wants a boy's name that starts with the letter H. What are you, a parrot? I heard it the first time. Come on, let's see it on the board. Oh. Fucking rigged. No wonder your ratings are going down the shitter. I'm gonna have a stroke. Drake, please save the day. Give me a boy's name that begins with the letter H. I'm gonna go with Hector, Steve. Jesus, I said, wait, what did you say? I said Hector, Steve. Hector, yes, excellent, good, see? Why couldn't the rest of y'all make as much sense as Drake? God bless you, Drake. Finally, we can see an answer on the board. With a J. Huh? Hector with a J, Steve. Damn, why didn't I think of that? With a J? Drake, do you hate me? No, of course not. I love everyone, Steven. Oh. Hate isn't in my vocabulary, but Hector is. It's up there, Steve. I know it. I'm gonna end it all. Oh. All right, listen up, freaks. I just got word from the man upstairs. The Lord is speaking to you, Steve? The showrunners, in an unprecedented split decision, due to unfathomable cartoonish levels of idiocy bordering racist ignorance displayed by both teams, the showrunners are deciding to skip this round's question and even the next round. 
Quite frankly, it is unbelievable that the one time we see astronomical levels of naivety and incomprehensible denseness, it comes from none other than the people that run our nation. We've had wrestlers on here, high school dropouts, controversial celebrities, crackheads, you name it. But congratulations, because you guys are the only people in this show's entire history to have been able to muster the combined disastrous ingredients of stupidity, toxicity, and most likely mental illness and fashion it in a way to where this episode was able to reach its full apex of nonsensical calamity. Is that good, Steve? Okay, we're moving melanin stealers directly into the fast money round so that they can try their hand at winning the grand prize and ending the show. Oh, hooray, we did it, guys. Nice job, boys. Now all we need to do is to get 200 points in this round and we'll win. I'm relying on you two. Since I was unjustly incapacitated, I don't think I'm mentally fit for this round. My brain feels like it was put through a blender after being electrocuted by Palpatine's testicle zapper. Don't worry, Kim. Donald and I have this. You better. I want that car, Joey. In the United States, that car may be eight years behind the production line, but in North Korea, that model is top quality. We're still assembling 2007 car models to this date. Jesus. All right, Kim. We'll get you that car. Donald, let's get you into this round first. Joe, go backstage and we'll call you out after Donald is finished. Okie dokie. All right, Donald, you ready for this? Steve, I was born ready. God practically brought me into this world with all of my physical and mental attributes maxed out. Intelligence being at the forefront. Whatever you say, 20 seconds on the clock, get me the hell out of here. That's plenty of time, Steve. I'll have all the answers out by the time the stopwatch hits the 18-second mark. That's literally impossible, but all right. Name an activity you'd do if you were bored. Ring up Stormy Daniels. I hate, don't encourage that behavior. Name an insect you wouldn't hesitate to kill if you found it in your house. A Dota player. What the, never mind. Name the first thing you'd do if you caught a burglar in your house. I'd let the Draco sing and fill him with holes like he's SpongeBob. On gang, Donald. Ah! Name a show modern teenagers love to watch. Well, it definitely isn't Family Feud, Steve. Eight seconds on the clock, Donald. All right, all right, Game of Thrones before season five, to be precise. That's a good answer. Yeah, the later seasons did suck. Name a way people communicated before texting came along. With the telephone. Hey, he didn't do half bad. Good job, Donnie. Good stuff, Donald. All right, Donald, let's see how you did. I said, name an activity you'd do if you were bored. You said, ring up Stormy Daniels. Yep, gotta change up the pace every now and then. Survey says... Not bad, not bad. Next I asked you, name an insect you wouldn't hesitate to kill if you found it in your house. You said... Good answer, good answer. Survey says... What the hell kind of survey is this, Steve? That answer should be number one. Donald, can you be quiet for once? Next I asked, name the first thing you'd do if you caught a burglar in your house. You said, let the Draco sing and fill him with holes like he's SpongeBob. A reasonable course of action. Survey says... So when Donnie wins the 20K, He's treating us to a fine dining steakhouse, right? Keep dreaming, Barack. I'm using my cut of that 20K on some Clash of Clans gems. Town Hall Level 9, here I come. I asked, name a show modern teenagers love to watch. Mm hmm You said Game of Thrones. Seasons 1 to 4, Steve. Don't forget that. Survey says... Only 15 people, Steve? What kind of idiots did you show this survey to? She-Hulk apologists with a cumulative IQ of 6? Pipe down, Donald. God damn, you talk a lot. Finally, I asked, how did people communicate before texting came along? Mm -hmm. You said telephone. I swear, Steve, if the number isn't above 40, I'm filing a class action lawsuit against whoever is doing these surveys. You ain't gonna do shit, Donald. Survey says. That's how we do, baby. Good going, Daddy. Nice one, Donnie. Atta boy, Donald. All right, let's bring out Joe and start the second round. Come on, Joseph. No need to worry. You're a smart fella. This is no time to get the heebie-jeebies. Oh, but what if I let down Kim and Donald? What will they say? Joey, you cost me that car, and you'll wake up to the sound of every missile from North Korea's arsenal heading straight for D.C. They should have casted me as Manny for Ice Age. I can put on a much better mammoth voice than Ray Romano. Ah, I'm gonna have a panic attack. Joe, it's time for your round now. Oh, shit. Come on, Joe, you can do this. So, Donald, my birthday's coming up. Now that you're about to win 20K, what are you thinking of getting me? I'm not buying you anything, Barack. If you wanted the prize money, then you should have come up with a better answer than Hercules. Oh, shut up, Donald. You went with your answer even after spelling it out for Steve. Listen, it didn't click at the time, but I think I redeemed myself with the fast money round. Joe only has to get 51 points. That's practically only an answer or two. You guys think he can do it? He better. I want that car. I'll look like a rock star riding that down the streets of Pyongyang. Look, he's coming out. 
All right there, Joe. How you doing? You feeling okay? I feel like I'm going to have a heart attack. Good. Now listen, Donald scored 149 points, meaning that you only have to get 51 points to win the grand prize. You're fucking welcome. Oh, geez, I don't like the pressure. Can I phone a friend? Mr. President, I haven't even asked a question yet. Now listen, things are going to be a bit tougher now, so we'll give you 25 seconds on the clock. Oh, fuck. You got this, Joe. Just breathe, buddy. Good luck, Joe. Joseph, if you don't... Uh, never mind. Good luck. All right, Mr. President, name an activity you'd do if you were bored. Uh, sleep? Name an insect you wouldn't hesitate to kill if you found it in your house. Uh, a rattlesnake. <laughs> Jesus, I surrender! Mr. President, that was not an insect. Try again. Uh, an ant. Name the first thing you'd do if you caught a burglar in your house. Well, I'd kindly ask Barack to leave. The hell's that supposed to mean, Joe? Name a show modern teenagers love to watch. Uh, The Golden Girls. Name a way people communicated before texting came along. Cave paintings. All right, Joe, you feel satisfied with your answers? No, I want to go home. Excellent. First, I asked you, name an activity you'd do if you were bored. You said sleep. Survey says... Oh, wow. Hooray. Good job, buddy. Good one, Joe. He's off to a good start. North Korea smiles upon you, Joey. Good start, Joe. Melanin Steelers almost has this in the bag, 40 points away. Oh, goodness. Next, I asked you, name an insect you wouldn't hesitate to kill if you found it in your house. You said an ant. Yep. They may be a great spicy, bacony snack, but leave too many of them roaming about, and you'll find a horde of them in your house soon enough. Survey says... Holy shit! Nice one, Joe. Home stretch, Joe. You're doing it, buddy. Ant was the number one answer. Next, I asked you, name the first thing you'd do if you caught a burglar in your house. You said... Well, why would Barack try to rob me anyways? I thought we were friends. Survey says... Aww. Call 911 was the number one answer. Uh-oh. It's okay. It was just one answer. He can still bring this home. Next, I asked, name a show modern teenagers love to watch. You said The Golden Girls. Yep. No youngster can resist the hit sensation that is the Golden Girls. Survey says... Stranger Things was the number one answer. Well, it's not really a surprise Joe didn't get that one. I'm honestly surprised he didn't name something older, to be honest, like Charlie Chaplin or something. Joe, you have one question left on the board. You need two points to reel this baby home. How you feeling? I can't stand the anxiety. I feel like I'm going to cry. Good stuff. That's what we like to hear. Finally, I asked you, name a way people communicated before texting came along. You said cave paintings. Oh, joy. This brings me back to how I asked out my first girlfriend. You asked her out by painting on a cave? Yep. Jesus, are you part of the Flintstones family? Just exactly how old are you? Survey says... No, I was so close. Damn, one point off. Nice try, Joe. I'm not going to give up that easily. That's all, folks. We want to thank the presidents for... You're not denying me of my car, Steve. Jesus, how do you get the keys? Security, you are authorized to use deadly force on him. Asian driver coming through, motherfuckers. Fuck your game, Steve. I'm riding this baby all the way back to Pyongyang. Please remain calm. Emergency medical personnel are on their way. Remain seated. Help is en route. All you had to do was get one point, Joe. I know, Barry. I know. Hmm. What if I told you, boys, Kim's felony here today is not the most interesting thing to have happened to us? Is it finally time to go back and kick ass? We finally reached out to you. Who are you guys talking about? Elon. He needs our help. Ooh, can Champagne Poppy tag along for the fun? Sorry, Drake, but this operation is on a need-to-know basis only. Ah, you bunch of party poopers.